Hey, hey, hey. This video is about estimating the population mean. And in the past, we've used Z star, or in the past, we've used Z distribution, because we are talking about confidence intervals that we're going to be doing today. Um, but you know what? It's not always about the Z. Sometimes it's about the T, which takes me to our T distribution. So go ahead to turn and turn to your page 9 of your notes. So the question is, what equation do we use for the confidence interval when we estimate the mean? Because remember, we just came out of our proportions in which we had to use formulas such as p hat plus or minus z star and the square root of p hat the proportion um, probability of success minus the probability of failure because that is what our p hat is. I should be using the right terminology a little bit more consistently. Um, divided by the square root of, um, divided by n, and taking the square root of that whole thing. That is our confidence interval when it was estimating a proportion. But now we are talking about estimating a population mean. So as you can see here, we have the formula in which, yes, this is still our point estimate. Yes, that is still our critical value. And yes, that is the standard error, or also known by the standard um, deviation of the statistic. But, 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 what if we can't, what if we don't know the value of sigma? or mu for that matter, but we're more concerned about sigma. What formula do I use instead? Well, the formula that I use instead is right here. Our x bar, which is still our point estimate, plus or minus. Here, a critical value now, we're talking about a t, which means we are using a t distribution now. So here's a t star, k times. Oh, check it out, check it out. There is our standard deviation for our sample, and of course, divided by the square root of n. Please note, on your formula sheet, you do not have this. It is understood that when you're given a sample, you know to use it. Speaking of which, here, what is this formula? Remember, this is your standard error. It is the same as it is when it was sigma divided by the square root of n, but if sigma is unknown, how are you going to use sigma divided by it? And if you cannot use that anymore, that means you can no longer use a, a T, uh, no longer can use a Z, we must use a T. So, I was a little premature when I mentioned it up here. What type of distribution does this result in? It results in a T distribution. And what are the characteristics? Now, this is the main characteristic right here. Let me highlight it. Sigma is unknown, okay? And another characteristic of it is it's something special about it. It has what's called the degree of freedom. And the whole premise behind that is because the if we cannot establish that it's normal, okay, if we or and or if we don't have the standard deviation of the population, we cannot use the Z distribution. If we cannot use the Z distribution, we need the degree of freedom. The degree of freedom gives us a little wiggle room, okay? And as I have right here, a population is not normal, but it's a large sample size. We know here that our degree of freedom is going to be the sample size minus 1. So, in other words, if I had n to equal, let's say, 50, our degree of freedom is going to be equal to 50 minus 1, which is 49. And please notice another way of writing this down. Here, I can say, here, given a t distribution, which I know that's the degree of freedom, it is going to equal 50 minus 1, which in this case is 49. Okay? So you can write it. It can be written this way. I personally would just write it this way all the time, just because, why not? 
but you might see it written like this sometimes, so don't, don't be um, bewildered when you see it. Okay, so let's move on to the next page of notes. Now, how does this distribution on the t-distribution chart look? Well, we've talked about this before because remember, as you look at your golden sheet, which looks a lot better than this yucky copy right here, this is a t-distribution, t-star, okay? Not to be confused anymore with um, z-star. And here, as we're looking at these values right here, please notice that inside of here are our test statistics. So when we come up with t equals, whatever the value is, this is our test statistic inside of here. Please also notice that across the top are our probabilities, and here are our degree of freedom. I also want you to see this as you look at, I'm trying to avoid the glare, as you look at this here, how, take a minute to compare your T to your Z. Your T has more probabilities under the tail, which makes sense because what's happening is as your um, sigma is constant, okay, it is fixed for the entire population. So if I take that with the sample size, sigma is still constant. But once I change that to S divided by the square root of N, remember, as my sample size is changed, well, that's going to also change too. So if that's going to change, now our standard error has more variability than it's had in the past because it was pretty fixed right there. Um, because it was based on the population, standard deviation here is based, it varies from sample to sample. So with that being said, okay, that means that inside the tail, we've got a lot more probabilities that can occur. Now, I want to jump down to um, this area right here. I want to talk about certain characteristics about the t-distribution, and unfortunately, I didn't leave enough room for us to write down, so time to squeeze in that information. Now, so things we need to know, multiple choice question waiting to happen, in other words, about the t-distribution. A t-distribution, as you already saw, is similar to the z. It is symmetric around um, the center. Um, it's um, one, a bell curve. Um, it's, um, mon it's only one hump, for lack of a better way. It's unimodal. That's the term I was looking for. Okay. Except, like I said, the t-distribution is um, bigger, has a bigger spread than a z. And I mentioned that right here because we've got more probabilities that are occurring in there. And I mentioned why already. Okay. Um, and we have less probabilities in the center. And if you look at this, and honestly, every time I draw it, they're going to look the same. I'll be honest. We just have to know, again, multiple choice question waiting to happen, that that's what happens. Another thing about the um, T distribution is that for our standard deviation, our um, standard deviation for the sample, when it is um, substituted with sigma, remember I told you that it was fixed. So everything I just said, just reiterating, okay? Um, but now that's going to change for every sample, so it's going to cause more variation. Okay, one more thing here. Um, as the degree of freedom increases, it's going to approach or normal curve. So, and this is what, I didn't mention this before, so let's talk. Look at the degree of freedom here. So that's a sample size of 21, so my degree of freedom is going to be 21 minus 20. There it is. Here, I've got 
if I had a sample size of 61, 61 minus 60 would give me this degree of freedom. Here, 1,000. That's huge. And look at 1,000. Look at infinity. And here, this is why we can use this confidence level when we're talking about Z star. Because as this thing gets bigger, okay, this T distribution starts to approach and starts to look like a Z distribution, which means the reality is we could use our Z star if we wanted to, but wait, no, we can't because, again, sigma is not known, and that's one of the key characteristics. If sigma is not known, we can't do it. So let's jump and do problem number 55 from our notes. Let's, so let's slide back up. Okay, so what am I looking for here? I'm looking for a confidence interval where n is equal to 10 um, on this table. So I'm looking for my degree of freedom is going to be 10 minus 1, which is, of course, 9. I have a 95% confidence interval. So what I need to do is go down to the bottom and find the confidence interval. And as I go down, I'm also sliding up. Okay, so here's the 95% confidence interval. Here is my degree of freedom, which is 9. And I'm sliding over. And then, of course, at the same time, I'm sliding up. And as you can see, the value is going to be 2.262. Now, remember this confidence interval that we were finding, we're no longer using the Z star, we're using T star. So, with that being said, let's make a note. What is this value? This is T star, and that's going to equal the 2.2. Now, let's find, given a 99% confidence interval, we're talking about our degree of freedom is going to be 20 minus 1, which is 19. Okay, so go for it, ladies and gentlemen. Find my T star. So we are looking at... our 99% and our degree of freedom. What was it? 19. Oopsie. So I'm sliding over. Yeah, I know it's a hot mess. I'm on the same line anymore. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you're going to get two point. This is bad, people. This is bad. And I covered up the wrong one. But that's two point eight six one I need a stylus and then finally let me use another approach okay I need this at 99 percent and I'm gonna go up to where I see 76 oh I don't see a 76 I see that it's gonna be here between 80 and 60 for our 90, what am I looking for? Our 90% CI, which means I'm going to use my conservative estimate. So that's 1.671. Conservative means a smaller value. Now, now I want to wrap this up by showing you how to do this in the calculator. Okay, so if I go to second VARS, and yes, this is an 84. And then we'll see if, if I can find it on the 83. So second VARS, we're going down to inverse T, kind of like inverse norm. 
please remember a 90% confidence interval means that it's the middle 90%, and then we have 5% here and 5% there. So what does that mean? That leftover 10%, I'm cutting in half because what I'm about to do now is have it find that area right there for me. So that's why it's 0 0.10 divided by 2. The degree of freedom is 76. Okay, I paste it. There it is. And get out the light, get away from the light in here. And we see that we have a negative 1.6. And yes, it is always going to be positive, so we just take the absolute value of that. And now I've got an 83, not an 83 plus, and there is no inverse T. I didn't think so, but, you know, hey, the mind goes first. I didn't remember. Just wanted to confirm. So, unfortunately, if you have an 83, ah, we got to use the table. And if you have an 83 plus, I think it's the same. I think you're out of luck just like we are with the 83. So, TTFM, ta-ta for now.